Welcome back to the show. As you know, Ottawa Fringe is on right now. It's running until June the 25th, and we've had some great artists and performers walk through our doors to talk about their great productions, and that's exactly what we're doing with my next guest. He is uh, the creator of the collaborative comedy, Michael Livshitz, joining us here on the show. Michael, welcome. Thank you great so much you for back. having me. And just to correct, I rolled through the door, not walked, but same you, principle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to get that no, in no, there. I like it. Sorry. I like I, it. No, well played. Well played. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start off talking a little bit about, you know, how you got into comedy and, and, and your brand of comedy. Like, what was your, what, what was the beginning? What, what started for So you? I got into comedy because I lost a bet, but the... Really? Made, yeah, I lost a bet and I had to do an open mic, but at the same time I was going through... Uh, a little bit of a difficult time with some changes regarding the disability and I wanted to kind of educate people about people with disability and what it was like having a disability and I had seen a comic by the name of Crazy Legs Finesca whose his real name is Chris yeah. and he has cerebral palsy and he touches on that in his comedy and I thought what a great way to kind of break the ice and everyone's laughing together but also may Kind of a message behind the comedy, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, well, I've seen your, I've seen your act, and and, it, and it's true. It is as much as it's comedy. It's it's educating people, and and you do such a good job of that. And you know, I follow you on social media, and I, uh, you know, I read your frustrations, and I don't think anybody realizes how frustrating it can be for someone oh, yeah, like yeah. yourself with when it comes to accessibility, right? Yeah, and I think so. I think partially, I, I joke that the comedy is also partially therapy because it, yeah. it is therapeutic to get out like I once had an issue with the uh, Quebec government about funding for something and I had gone on this like 20 minute rant at an open mic and the <laughs> organizer would just let me go because people were enjoying it and my friend I sit down my friend's like getting out a little frustration are we I'm like yeah yeah pretty much so I think it's a, it's, a, it's therapeutic right yeah yeah for sure uh, let's talk about collaborative comedy yep. tell me a little bit about how that came to be the history behind it so back in 19, uh, in 2019, 2020, uh, I was trying to have more issues with my hip, so I couldn't do stairs anymore. So I wanted to come up with something, an accessible room, and I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, so we started Collaborative Comedy on March 3rd, 2020, which was a horrible time no, to start a bi-weekly comedy <laughs> show. Uh, timing was really off on yeah. that. Uh, so we spent about 18 months going back and forth uh, between in person and uh, on uh, Zoom. Uh, and then after 18 months, we kind of said, okay, we're going to put it on a hiatus until things calm down. So now we've managed to bring it back at the Ottawa Fringe. So the basic idea is the audience picks topics, and then it's up to the comics to come up with jokes on those topics. Uh, it, it used to be a competition. Now we've taken out the competition and added more collaboration. Okay. Um, so we're actually tweaking the format starting with tonight's show. We will have a little bit of stand-up just to loosen up the audience and get the comics going, and then we will go to the topics that the audience uh, suggested. So who makes up this collaborative then? Uh, so there's... Uh, Three different comics each night. Okay. Uh, so tonight we have Glennis Marshall. Um, oh man, and I'm blanking on the lineup. Uh, but if they go to the website, all, <laughs> the, all the comedy yeah. bo comedy yeah. bios are there. Oh man. Um, I because you okay. know what? I got an Excel spreadsheet in front of me with the lineup whenever I'm talking, and I forgot to check that before That's I left okay. the app. We'll send them to there's the, there's uh, wonderful comics on each show. <laughs> yeah, and the website just came up, and okay, of course, perfect. if they go to Ottawa Fringe, it'll have uh, it'll right, have so the bios on, too. On the Fringe site, they just mentioned the show. Okay. okay. Uh, but the bio of the comics is on my site. Oh, terrific! Um, Excellent. The site that we just gave them. So yeah. Uh, you've got four shows left, but yep. let's talk about you. You've, you've done a couple of shows already. What has what the response been like? The response this has been good. Uh, people have liked it. They, um, they've they enjoyed it. They found it a fun format. Uh, the, we're adding a little bit more stand-up just to pull us off the show right. a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the response has been good. Um, we did have uh, feedback has been good from the audience members. Nice. Uh, so, was at the end of the day, that's what you want, right? If people come to a comedy show, let them have a good time yeah. and go home happy. Obviously. Uh, you mentioned accessibility, and you know that's a feature of this show. How how do you incorporate that exactly? So, fortunately for us, we have a sponsorship with Assign Inc., 
who does uh, ASL interpretation and other services oh, such as that. Uh, so three of the six shows, so our first two shows, and then the show this coming Thursday, June 22nd at 8.30, will have ASL interpretation. Uh, and the Fringe itself, uh, all the venues are wheelchair accessible. Um, and wa there's wheelchair access washroom, which is not something you often have at our events, yeah, so I'm yeah. pretty big on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, and like there's a few spaces uh, ready for people in wheelchairs, so there's not Excellent. any awkward shuffling of chairs. There's a space designated at all venues for people uh, with wheelchairs and mobility of devices uh, so everyone can get in. Obviously, Ottawa Fringe has been great to work with then. Right? Yeah, when it comes I, to I have to say, Ottawa Fringe, they actually have a coordinator responsible for accessibility. Really? And did stuff that I'm like, wow, that's a really good idea. I never thought of that. So I, like, I consider myself pretty advanced for obvious reasons about accessibility, but like, they do just something wonderful. Like, I think they're probably one of the most accessible festivals I've ever seen. Well, and as I said, I follow you on, on social media, and every now and then, you know, you, you present uh, a new frustration and how frustrating it, it, it can be. Even, I mean, I, I think it's one of the latest ones I saw is you, you know, being asked to go out with a bunch of the comics after a show, and they ended up going to a non-accessible restaurant. Right, like people right. assume I'm not sociable. I'm very sociable. It's just I need to be able to get in where we're going to socialize, right? Right. Uh, and the worst part was that was on, I had just finished doing a set about Red Shirt Day, which is a, an awareness thing that it used to see you wear a red shirt yeah. to promote accessibility. I'm like, I just finished <laughs> talking about people. <laughs> like, come on. That very show in front of all those it comics. Was, we're talking a half hour, people. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. Yeah. Michael, always really a pleasure, man. Thanks pleasure. so much Thank for joining for us. Uh, I want to remind you, Collaborative Comedy at the Ottawa Fringe Festival. There are four shows left running from June 19th to the 24th. That's at Arts Court. And you can find out more information online and get your tickets online as well at ottawafringe.com. We'll be back with more right after this.